Hi friends, today I'm going to cover cloud architect related day-to-day -day activities and overall activities. Before we jump into our today's topic, I just want to give you a quick glance on my channel and the relevant videos. In my channel, you can play the playlist for the software architecture and cloud architecture. Here is where you can see the variety of architectures. At the same time, you can also see the guidelines for starters. So this is worth watching before you get into the architectures. At the same time, I have covered variety of uh, the interview questions and real time scenarios. You can scroll down in my channel. You can see the real time scenarios and the interview questions. These are also real time interview questions, which will help you to get through your interviews and also understand how the architect role carries. So let us get into our today's topic. So here I just wanted to give you a quick glance on the different type of roles on the architectural side in your knees and DevOps. Forget about all the other roles. Let us focus on the architecture. So on the architect roles, you usually see migration architect who is dedicated person on complete migration. If the organization has a requirement of huge workloads shifting from on-premises to the cloud, they will look for the migration architect. At the same time, services-based companies usually consult various customers and they, they will need the migration architect because they don't address one particular requirement. They will have variety of requirements in the pipeline. Cloud native architect who decides or defines the architectures based on the past model. It's 100% or 80% of the past model goes in the native architecture. Adapting or leveraging the power of the cloud comes under the cloud native architect model. Cloud solution architect, there is no such kind of uh, strict or you know the limitation for the cloud solution architect. He can do anything. It can be multi-cloud, it can be single cloud or hybrid cloud, no matter what it is. So that kind of role comes under the cloud solution architect. So DevOps architect mainly focus on the DevOps related activities and the architectures. There are little changes based on the organization who is preparing the JD. So they may sometimes, even though they are referring to cloud native architect, they may ask even outside that as well. So, but in general, these are the different architect positions you may come across. Moving on. So under the product company, I'm taking product company as an instance. Uh, so you can consider one product company as one, one of your customer in case if you are referring to the services companies. So one particular product company, it can be the day-to-day -day activities because None of these jobs can be completed within a day. Everything will be keep going for few weeks or months. That is the reason I'm trying to be specific that it could be a day to day activity and also the overall activity as architect provides and perform wide variety activities. I can say 70 to 80 percent of these activities can be covered as part of that. Without further delay, let us get into our today's topic. So identifying scope of migration in various programs. So adapting the cloud, assume that you are dealing with or your organization is dealing with multiple programs and projects. You can identify the scope in each program or a project. How much of those workloads are what are the different programs are eligible to move to the cloud. The next one is migration plans. In the migration plans, when you identify any such kind of program or project which can be eligible or which is worth to move to the cloud, those need to have the variety of uh, or different type of plans for moving to the cloud. So that also you, you had to perform as an architect. Every of this activity will contain the minimum of the evaluation, architecture, cost comparison, documentation and presentation. 
80% of these activities will contain necessarily all the above mentioned points. Moving back, migration assessment, discovery and implementation, any identified and planned migration activity will have the assessment, discovery and execution. Partial movement of any servers is also possible. Assume that you have application, middleware, and the backend. Only the database server has to move, be moved to the cloud. Uh, maybe be based on the variety of conditions, or you know the front-end application has to be moved to the cloud. Uh, that can uh, very much possible in the real-time environment. So those things are also need to be performed by the cloud architect. Addressing various challenges in uh, various products, there will be variety of challenges keep coming to the architect plate. The recent example is uh, Log4j uh, is as a security threat immediately every architect has to get into the situation not just the architect even the DevOps guys uh, developer designers everybody has to uh, had to get into that problem and see where that impact is coming up as an architect you also need to see which all the programs are getting impacted and make sure that what is the necessary action can be taken at that place if anybody is using and or if nobody is using they need to give a clean sheet that okay everything is fine so that is a headache based challenges we may receive one is security related or even in your data related something is piling up so there there, there are plenty of reasons what challenges may come up in, in the day to day any upgrade scope within the cloud space for an instance, you know, there are plenty of uh, features are getting retired on the cloud space, whether it could be AWS or Azure. Uh, if you take a Azure, generally they say that uh, we are retiring uh, Azure function V1, then you need to move to the V3, right? Uh, similarly, they say service bus version is getting changed and the older version is getting retired. So as an architect, you should be ready for those new upgrades and the retirement of the old uh, products or the feature. The another one very key in any cloud architect uh, responsibilities is that high availability disaster recovery failover strategies. Minimum thing every cloud should know how the high availability can be given to the architecture and disaster recovery whenever the issue occurs or whenever the server is down, how are you recovering that whole data center or the particular server? Failover strategies, if one particular data center is uh, failed, then automatically how you are failing over to the other data center, whether that is being addressed within your architecture or not. So these are the minimum common things anytime when you create an architecture that need to be addressed as a different architecture or within the same architecture you need to address that. So these are the regular things that need to be taken care of. Addressing any production issues. So generally something, some server is down. Uh, architect also need to jump into the situation why this is happening uh, you may be doubting like why should I get into right the DevOps guy is uh, the administrator or support team but as an architect you should know what is happening what need to be done what can be done there in that particular uh, aspect so there are again variety of uh, problems comes even in the production it can be a server down it can be maybe it's not performing up to the expectation or some data is piled up and all suddenly your performance of your servers or you know web response has gone gone down so all those type of issues uh, the architect need to address new feature related architecture and uh, cloud readiness as i mentioned say for example the product is adding a new feature or new service new microservice so what is that we need to do you need to be ready for that particular new feature release and you also need to prepare the architecture if it is a pass based you need to provide like what what type of resources need to be used for example i have to add more azure functions or i need to add more azure apps app services or you need to create a vms or what kind of security you will enhance to so all those things uh, also need to be covered when the new features comes to the product data movements so for example you are uh, maintaining your on-premises server but you want to move the data to the cloud as a migration as part of the migration or uh, you are taking your backups of the data in the cloud or maybe archival strategy for your data 
maybe partial data movement from the main master database to the secondary databases. So all those things comes as part of the data movements. So usually a uh, few, few companies has their own data architects, but as an oral architect, you should also aware what data movements are. You, you will be keep performing uh, or you will be keep coming with the kind of architecture on that as well. Archival and pur purging architectures, as I mentioned. So, for example, you have a maybe some kind of SQL database and uh, all the data is being piled up. Assume that you are using Azure SQL, which is a pass based service, and now all suddenly your service, uh, your data is uh, growing exponentially and it is reaching maybe 2 TB, 3 TB. You can't maintain the 3 TB, TB of data in the main master database of the SQL. You can as a restrictions, but you will end up paying huge bills to the cloud vendor uh, up to 16 TB. But after 16 TB, you can't do that. So there are limitations always. So you need to have a strategy. How do you move after three months, six months or one year of the data piling up? You need to keep on moving the data in the automation automated process so that uh, how do you define that what are the different components you're adapting again while you're moving that data to the other components what components you can use for example adx azure data explorer can be one of the option or snowflake can be the other option azure uh, data lake stories can be the other option to archive your data so wide variety of options are available you will be evaluating again which is the best option for your requirement you will be doing the cost comparison and you will be presenting to the various stakeholders to convince them as well. Similarly, backup strategy. How do you backup all your services, all your applications and data that is uh, also need to be addressed by the architect. Moving on. So definitely it's a big list for the architect because uh, the person is uh, a person exists everywhere across all the programs and variety of problems. So cloud optimization is another key element. For example, your cloud bills are coming almost uh, reaching $1 million, $2 million. You can't pay because cloud, if you don't use the cloud in a right manner, automatically it will give you a huge bills where you will bankrupt or your organization will bankrupt. So you need to keep an eye where you can optimize your cloud utilization or maybe some unused resources or uh, instead of sending uh, so many messages to the service bus uh, you can reduce it for example you are using a iot solution you are sending uh, every few seconds uh, a message from each uh, iot device rather than that uh, you can even uh, reconfigure that to a minute which can reduce a lot of cost similarly if you are using a cosmos db cosmos db definitely a little expensive affair uh, probably you can look at the other variety of options available in the NoSQL space or you know moving the data from the Cosmos DB to the archival part right so those uh, different type of strategies uh, there is a big scope that way you can optimize uh, then cloud related security so you have web application firewall Azure firewalls VPNs whatnot VNets so you have to make sure that your all the cloud deployed resources are well secured by utilizing which, uh, the features which are provided by the cloud or outside the cloud also. So uh, cloud provides uh, web application firewalls, firewalls, VPNs, VNets, uh, apart from that even Azure Defender, uh, Security Center. So see where it can be utilized, how it can be utilized, how you can fit that components into your architecture so cloud automation is a uh, is another piece architect should identify where the automation activities can happen and reduce the human effort in the variety of places so you must also need to be future ready uh, example now you are looking at your uh, current architecture but it may not sustain for longer every architecture you know can be deprecated or can be no more valid after four or five years, right? So you need to look at your architecture, how valid it is, and you should be future ready by anticipating what's gonna come in terms of the load, in terms of the uh, traffic, what it is all on your products, on the data, amount of data. So all those aspects uh, matters here. So by anticipating 
what's going to happen by seeing the existing cloud infrastructure uh, also the traffic the number of users all those things you need to be ready for the future cloud reviews and auditing this is another important aspect the cloud architect need to perform so you need to continuously review your cloud resources and also need to audit uh, audit for the best practices what you might have defined also audit for the benchmarks those all need to be taken care uh, at the same time compliance check whether uh, your applications are really compliant to the requirement for example few applications need to be compliant to the uh, gdp or or hipaa or whatever no matter what it is that uh, as per that particular rule set whether your cloud deployments are uh, meeting the requirement or not devops is another aspect that uh, the architect should have minimum knowledge of the devops how uh, the cicd pipelines run or how automation of the devops uh, run uh, also what are the different tools can be used like sona cube coverty uh, black duck uh, iris risk so all those things also can be can matter for some time uh, monitoring tools uh, is another important aspect that uh, the architect need to make sure that all the monitoring tools are in place it can be inbuilt by the cloud vendor or maybe external tools azure monitor or you can use datadoc for the um, data based monitoring there are plenty of uh, tools again i have covered in my other videos uh, pvc is for provided solutions so uh, for example you are providing one solution for any of your uh, project movement or uh, cloud migration you also need to prove that with the poc not just for the existing solutions you also need to provide the pocs for the new cloud features assume that there is a new feature released by the cloud vendor uh, maybe recently have come across uh, azure load test is a uh, one uh, new feature uh, at the same time iot camera edge related devices is another feature which i came across very recently so we have to build the pocs to prove that that it can be adapted in a uh, different type of products or application multi cloud adaptation is um, very much needed in the current world as many customers many product based companies are relying on the multi cloud rather than a single cloud we never know when the cloud vendor comes come to the outages or the servers are down recent instances for the aws were bad like uh, the netflix and uh, other uh, websites were down because aws was uh, data centers were down because of various reasons so just to avoid such kind of instances customers are preferring to go with the multi cloud then define standards and best practices so as an architect you should always define the standards and best practices for your cloud adaptation or cloud creation cloud resource creation like say naming conventions or what best practices or what ts can be adapted in what scenarios and what security models they can adapt when they are creating a new program or a project or deployment so all those things can be defined in the form of a document and ask your teams to follow those guidelines and best practices and you have to make sure that your teams are following those best practices and uh, standards in your review process self healing architecture this is another important aspect that you know how that can be healed by itself when any failure happens or any downtime occurs so those type of architectures are also another key load balancing anyway uh, that is another important aspect always for the architect so here are the uh, these are the few important activities i have covered in a nutshell remember that if 80% of these activities will have the architecture feature evaluation cost comparison presentation and documentation ultimately presentation is important you need to convince your stakeholders by presenting what you have gone through and why you are recommending the appropriate approach if you have any further queries please post it in the comments i'll definitely try to address your questions thanks for watching my videos